we're going to stretch over the lid. This one's a little more tricky just to the, you want to try to get the seams on the edges like they're directed, but also you got to pull it around so you don't see the foam whenever you put your handle in. So what I normally do is I start with my handle, get that piece kind of set in place. screws in because even with the screws you can still maneuver it and it's the ones with the flat head or flat shoulders Pull them. some of them are torqued some of them are Phillips it depends on which truck it is and now you can kind of see they're on it there but if you get a little tug just kind of line it you just kind of want this about the same all the way around, same bit uh, measurement there. It's not rocket science. I use an air stapler. Some guys have hands. Put a couple staples there to hold it. Check it. Kind of just want to make sure your seam meets with your pieces here. And I come to the back. Usually I line this piece up, they're pretty good about being the exact same, so I line that piece up with just the line of the hinge bracket that was there. I've done these so long, I've got the feel of it to know how much pressure is, is on it. You gotta make sure you get the staples on the inside of where your clip holder is. Cause if you staple over, then you gotta go back and cut them all out. And if you're on commission, try to work efficiently. So you're not losing your money. This hole here, just kind of line that one up. Some people use little magnetic trays and things like that for their screws. It's one more thing I have to unpack and pack when I'm mobile. That's it. Complete console. Put it in the car, wipe it all down, get all the blue goo off of it. It does get a little greasy. Set that piece to the side. Any final adjustments we can do in the vehicle. You just want to set it out to the sun. Get it nice and the sun to get rid of all the vinyl blocks right here. Then we'll go to the passenger seat because you have to put the passenger seat and the console at the same time. So I'll work my way backwards and put it in. Okay. 
Bear with me on this one. One flip. Go. Go. Lean back a piece. We're going to pop the handle on. This one has a C clip, almost like a window clip. I use my panel tool slide in. They actually make tools for it, or you can use a rag. Put your hand here so if it does pop off, you find it. That's why I like a clean workspace. So I got it without popping it out. And then just slide it back. That way you can just snap it back in. You can go underneath, unclip this. You go on top, clips out from the back side, and slides out from the front. Then you got two Phillipses on it. A big Phillips and a fat thin uh, one. I usually put them in my little handle there. And then this panel is ready to come off. It's got clips in the front. Metal clips here. Metal, two metal clips. So if you do this in the winter, you want to uh, sometimes steam those a little bit. Get them a little, if they're warm, they unsnap a lot easier. Instead of trying to do it with, um, when they're cold, anything cold, plastic, very brittle, especially if it has any kind of age on it. Disconnect the uh, pressure sensor for the seat to turn on and off the airbag. Don't yank that out. There's ways to fix it, but the true way to fix it is by new. Now in here, you can, if you're trying to milk the clock, you can actually go in and take out all the hog rings. We cut above the listing. Again, that one's another one that the factory did not get hog rings. Here's the sensor for the airbag. It tells, the, tells you if you have the, a weighted person in the vehicle. Of the particular weight that they have that set up. Put this hog ring in the whole dealership. Manufacturer missed. I like leaving the listing in due to the fact that it gives me uh, gives me more area to hog ring. I know the bar goes all the way, but depending on if it's looking lumpy or not, I can adjust. Throw that to the side. Then we're going to cut this out and be careful. Uh, like I said, I've done this so long that I know where everything is on these. So I'll just cut the whole back section out of this. That piece is gone. This one's got Velcro and a couple hog rings at the very top. I cut the material around the headrest piece here, just like so I got to fight it. Just push it down. And that way it pulls around. The airbag is two eight millimeters. The most crucial thing about this piece is um, hold on, hold on. The most crucial thing on the airbags on these dodges is making sure you clip them back in. They, get, they kind of double clip. If they're not clipped in, you will have an airbag light. But luckily with the dodges, if you just plug it back in, you find out the airbag will go off. Let's it on the side. Here's the airbag. You have the safety, the lock-in piece. There's no charge on it so it won't go off. And then you just pull it out. And there's your airbag. And the Velcro up. Cut that listing. There's your seat cover. Put this one back on. when you lay them on the concrete that nobody steps on them or throw them down because they can't be scarred up. I don't want to scratch up leather. 
that stem does pretty good on making sure you don't have any flaws in them. They QC them, but they do sometimes get by. The airbag sleeve. I start with the, the middle listing. Once again, the cat skin does a sew tab. When they sew kits, most any sewer knows they do a little V to tell them where they're at and make sure they're sewing and it's not looking gathered up. So I use that as my center. And on the foam, it's actually marked, you know, center, and then your outsides. Um, some of the older Dodges actually did uh, fall green down the sides. locks in the bottom, get your two screws, and we'll plug it in last. Just gonna look under, line her up. I do some kind of hand start those just because they are a fine thread. Airbags are expensive. Placed, snap in and locks. You'll hear it snap, and then once you then you'll snap it in with a locking pin. That way your shirt's locked in. We'll fold over the back edge and work our way around. Tuck it and pull. J, J clips basically. Uh, C, I like to be a C or a J. They just kind of lock. That's where it takes some strength in your fingers. I kind of use my panel tool to make sure they're kind of middle, evenly on each side. I may have just OCD kind of thing. And you zip it. As you're zipping it, you kind of watch the zipper as you go down to make sure all of them are catching. Because sometimes it'll get off, and that's where you can have the seam bust. And then you gotta fight that whole zipper to get that seam back on point. The zipper. Fords and Chevys usually don't have that issue. More of the tighter kicks. Here's where you get to take some frustration out. Kind of just work it, pushing the kit over, and this is all Velcro. Um, boot kick, chopping it. That side. If you do that kind of equally, you get a pretty good kit. Um, here, the sun will take this out right here, real fast. If I just set it in the sun, not bad. Spin it around, set it to the side. Let's do the bottom pushing. This one's all the hog ring. Babies are all Velcro uh, Fords. I think of Velcro and Paul Green. That might be the 
seam, you just kind of make sure that your seams are lined up with your foam seams. And then I usually start with that seam so I know I'm in the right place instead of working the back. So that pushes it. and put pressure on it and kick up. It's got a little Velcro strap goes around the bottom to tuck it in around the back sides of the plastic. Some people go ahead and put it on the seat right there. But with this one I find it's easier to just go ahead and wrap it. Some people argue with me over that. Shop market. You just tuck it down in there, go on the phone, reattach your seat sensor, which is right here. Just reattach that. This is the foam, you just gotta kind of push down some. I've seen it before where guys put them in there and they just shove it in there and leave this foam stuck up there and the pull the uh, support bar is exposed, even though you don't see it, but it's just the install. You see it if somebody else ever goes in here to, to work on it. Add seat heaters, seat coolers. If they added seat coolers, they got to change the actual kit to a uh, recirculated heat uh, foam. Cat skin makes that as well. You got a lot of customizing to the seat to do those. So it's not a bad install. If done right. Cut out just a little cut time being for your uh, lean back lever. We'll come back to that side in a moment. I don't get everything else attached. Some of the kits come with a flap that go under here for this Phillips. I usually just fold it over because the seat belt holds it. It'll never, it's on against the console. It's just another thing you gotta tear apart. It's kind of nonsense that even the factory one on this particular seat didn't even have it attached through the screw. It was short. So the factory can do it. You can do it as well. Reattach your, your shoe plate. My table picks up a lot of scars from the, the leg scratching the table. Alright. This is the trickiest part of the whole install on the Dodges. Uh, on the Dodges, you have to cut out this big section right here for just this bolt. You I mean you can cut out that little piece, but this whole section kind of sits in there. And if you don't cut it out and you just run it in, you'll have a huge gap you can stick your hand in, or it'll look all boogered up. So, and then of course with anything in the automotive, things shrink, like your headliners fall down and things like that. So this is my trick to it. I set it up there with these two clips where they're supposed to go. I don't fully put it on. Now I know it's right there. So I go in here, about a quarter of the way up, I cut a sliver down and a sliver down. And then I cut that all the way across. See how much that just released? There's the foam. Just cut a little bit more. And I tuck mine. That way if that thing shrinks, the only thing you gotta really worry about is that cut and that cut. Because this piece here is plenty long. You can actually if it started shrinking, you could pull it down and put some screws in it. We call it rigging, but sometimes you just got to do it, depending on the future of the shrinkage. If you've never seen it happen, um, guys cut it too short and you have to do that. I haven't seen one actually shrink that much that it come back and have to fix it. Snap that panel back on, come back with your screws. The back one in first. Once it's all snapped together, it lines perfectly back up. The big fat screw. Put your blade on. And then you snap your handle. The handle is grooved um, with the flat pieces in here, so it can only go on one way. It's not going to let you go all the way down. It's not like a window crank that can go in any direction. For 
the old school guys. So you got a little bit of a gapage there, but uh, not much you can do, unfortunately. Right, now the other trick to this is your headrest pieces. I've come, this is my trick, some guys can take the pieces out and you just tap it with a hammer and it will actually cut out perfectly. I just lightly cut the top layer, running my hand around it, leaving about a quarter inch all the way around on both of them. Don't cut, don't press down too hard because you can actually cut the bottom of uh, the plastic. If you don't want, and then you just kind of work it all the way around. There you go. Well, you can see, besides the headrest. I typically do headrest last because they're the easiest, but we'll go ahead and knock one out so you've got a full seat. These actually, if you cut really shallow, you cut just the material off, they have uh, like a, almost like a foam trash bag on them. Which, for the material, when we put the headrest on, it's going to slide on really easy. bottom. Another trick, a lot of guys use uh, silicone sprays. I found Dollar General, a little bit of glass cleaner. Works really well for heated seats as well when you're installing those because it dries up and it's slippery while it's wet and it dries and it, they stick. This will just kind of work it. Make it look really easy. Chevy's are really tight to do. Just kind of work that around. Be careful because they they rip right here really easy. Really easy. Most guys will just start terrible. Unless if you're getting into, into it and buy your headrest machine, but we're mobile so we don't carry the headrest machine. I do have a handheld one, but I don't use it. Set that bad boy in the sun, and there's your one seat. Move that seat just so you don't gouge the paint from the vehicle or hit a door frame or panel because that does get expensive and your boss will be really mad. Okay, on this trick here, you have, if you push down the piece, you have a Phillips head right there. I have found out that you can snap it off and rotate it down. Never even have to remove the panel. So I'm all about, I'm grab my 13. I'm all about trying to save a trip or save a uh, thing to do. Just kind of, we're separating the lean back to the lean back from the bottom. And you can rotate that back up so it takes the pressure off. Same thing for the other side. Just snap it apart. Just like on the front seats, it has the little inside panel piece. And just kind of bring that back up just so it takes the pressure off that field. This piece is separated. Sometimes you get lucky and you find all kinds of goodies down in there. Like a treasure hunt sometimes. You never know what you find. Just work your way around with a blame if you're not saving it. Some people say, why don't you save it? Uh, because I don't have tractor trailers because I do so many of them I don't have nowhere to store it. I've been trying to figure out a way to inventory and save cloth. 
yet see anybody do it. So I Gibson, and that's because they use the same truck over and over and over and over. So we saved their material. And have a guy that comes in and builds it. Or he works there and he'll sew inserts and use it for little, little pieces. There you go. One removed bottom, pulled up by the top. And we're ready to put the back on. Black seats on the dodges are very easy. Nice and soft now. Got six hog rings to turn it inside out. Same with the front seat, you line up the center tabs. All green to three. So you get center tab, center tab. Sometimes you gotta offset the hog ring just a little bit, even though it's pretty close, just because there's already a hog ring there. As long as the, the markings line up, you're fine. We're going to work the edges down, just kind of rolling it, almost like making a, putting your fitted sheet on a bed. We'll lay it up. Just, as long as your seams are lining up, you just kind of roll it. Side it. Back seat's a little more vinyl to it, for, um, just because it's such a big surface. Um, actual leather content on the cat scans is more than your factory, but the actual leather part of the seat is what you sit on, not all the other areas we're tucking around for the child uh, tethers. zippers on this. People can't get it and they're fighting it and they're just trying to use the zipper as the, the part to pull it all together. You kind of make sure you get the zipper on the zipper not pull the part that um, catches the soap pieces. Be like, something about Mary. Don't want to do that. Tuck the zippers up underneath. Put it back over. And if your front seams are where they're supposed to be, see how it's buckled up? I work from the front and work my way back so it kind of pushes the tethers back a little bit so you don't see any in the foam. Manipulate it a little bit to go down in there.
bottom. And we'll set that to the side and we'll do the front. Or the lean back part of it. It'll sit just like that. Sometimes it's easier to roll it on if you set it to the floor and do it just like that. Pretty light by itself. Pull the headrest out. Tight sometimes. Oh, but we're gonna do the same thing. Cut it off. Vehicles, the actual pieces of Velcro will tear out as you're pulling it. All you need is just some uh, some glue, some spray glue, glue both sides, and stick them back in. Let them dry pretty good before you go to put the cover back on so they don't pull back up. Or you can glue this the channel and glue the channel of the actual cover, and once they dry, then kind of stick them in the same purpose. Tricks in case you have a missing piece, if you're replacing somebody who's already done it, or uh, vice versa, it pulled off and somebody pulled up and threw it away the next day. In some shops work in assemblies, so one person strips, the other person puts them all in. Same as the bottom, just line up your points. Three hot points on one side, three on the other. This point of it is the semi tricky because these like to tear. I'll start with the top, get it worked out really good. And here's where it likes to tear. So you kind of just work that very, very carefully, kind of hold it, pinch it as you roll it over. That corner does tear pretty easy, which if it does, if you don't see it due to it's behind, the seat doesn't fold down, and it's also behind the plastic. Two uh, J clips, one on each side. Sometimes those are really pain to clip. I cut these the same as I showed on the front seats. I cut them from the back side and cut a little, makes a little square out. I tuck them under, that way in case it ever shrinks, I got some material there I can try to do something with, if it need to be. The back of one has J-clips all the way across the bottom. Caskian does the green setup. The J-clips I think are a little expensive. And get a little long like that. I start with lining up the ends here. If those are lined up, pretty much you're lined up. I hope in theory, because that's what they do. I found it to be that way so far. 
Um, don't start real close to the edge because it will just tear out with all the pressure. You can go back after you get it all together and put one closer to the edge. Apply a ton of pressure to the first one. I try to go the same direction on them so you don't get it sideways seam. There you go. Now we're going to cut out on the side for our 13 millimeter bolt. This was, uh, you can feel it, it's an indented. Plus, like I said, I've done them so many times, I know exactly where it's at. Same thing on both sides. And now we're ready to put it back together. Slide it down a little bit. Usually, if I have two tables, I would have done that piece first. So this piece would still be on the table. I wouldn't have to pick it up a second time. I just have to sit it on it and be done. Try to save your back. Nobody gets younger. <laughs> Once we get this together, we'll cut out the headrest and slap the headrest in. Here we go. Put the back cage back in. Inside panel plastic. We have full screws. One thing you don't never want to do is you never want to cut into a seam. If you cut that, that thing will just start unraveling, and you don't want that. You can manipulate those little corners, just kind of roll them up so it gives them a little more pointed. So make sure you stay out of the seams. Same as the front, just kind of feel your plastic, see your hole. You can always cut bigger. So if you're uncomfortable, cut small and work your way out. Vinyl stretch is pretty good, so it don't take much, especially when it's nice and warm, like it is today. I was tight, so I usually start in the middle, work both sides.